Prince Harry's hurtful dig at Charles cleared up after hell of a lot of money unveiled. Prince Harry's claims against his father Prince Charles in regards to financial support have been looked over again in the wake of a new royal report. Prince Charles' part in supporting Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's departure from the royal family has been highlighted. This comes as the Prince of Wales' office insisted he paid a substantial sum to the former working royals. ITV Royal Rota podcast host Lizzie Robinson commented on the update. She told listeners, we knew that Prince Charles had wanted to help support them with the move. We'd been told that he was supporting them financially. We also knew that they wanted to get to a place where they were financially independent and could support themselves. During his interview with Oprah Winfrey, the Duke of Sussex had made claims about his father's refusal to help them. Harry said that his family had literally cut him off in the first quarter of the year. Royal biographer Penny Juna commented on this, I think, Prince Charles was hurt. We don't know exactly how much, he gave his son. But it could be up to £2 million to see, Harry, through his first foray into being independent. She continued, that's a hell of a lot of money. I think Harry was just extraordinarily ungrateful and ungracious. To suggest that his father had just cut him off was very hurtful. The royal family released their annual finances, the Sovereign Grant Report, which included the final quarter that the Sussexes were a part of the institution. Clarence House's accounts show Charles continued to give the couple money from the Duchy of Cornwall until about early summer, which is also the first fiscal quarter of the year. This reflects Harry's claims that this is the time when the funding was cut. A spokesperson for the Sussexes hit back at accusations that the timelines did not match. It's inaccurate to suggest that there's a contradiction. The Duke's comments during the Oprah interview were in reference to the first quarter of the fiscal reporting period in the UK, which starts annually in April. This is the same date that the transitional year of the Sandringham Agreement began and is aligned with the timeline that Clarence House referenced. 